But um, again, thank you for being here and just thank you for being willing to listen and being willing to learn. I'm always like so, so, so appreciative of the people who show up to even the smallest of little things like this because it shows that you are trying to grow your students, grow your leadership program and grow your school. And that just makes such a difference statewide. Um, so just a little bit about me. This is my contact information and how you can kind of find me or get a hold of me outside of this little short time that we have together. Uh, my email address, Alexander underscore Tafoya at dpsk12.org. I work at Abraham Lincoln High School, which is in Denver Public Schools. And it's really funny to me because Chasa does not have a lot of DPS representation on the leadership level. So I'm trying to change that. So <laughs> if you want to have your kids touch base with an urban school, if you're a mountain school, or if you just want to kind of get ideas from one of these other schools around a DPS, um, I'm always here. My email inbox is always open. Don't hesitate to ever reach out with any questions or ideas or even um, doing things that we can share. I love collaborating with other advisors. So there's my email. Uh, and then that's our student council's Instagram. It is student run, um, but when somebody messages it with a question, the kids send me that message and they tell me, hey, can you answer this? So if you ever wanna hop on there, it's pretty new, but I love networking. Um, so if you have your student council Instagram, come follow my student council Instagram, then we'll follow back because I, 100% believe that teaching and advising is all about beg, borrow, and steal from other people. Like, don't ever think that you have to come up with the unique ideas yourself. So, you know, come come check in with us, come follow us, come reach out. Um, just some info on my context and my core beliefs around planning. When I was thinking about like, what am I gonna share? Uh, so my school is an urban school. It's a really, really large school. We have about 950 students. Um, and we are a school that goes through a lot of turmoil. So when it comes to recognizing staff and students, um, I always go, go back to like, how are we creating this core culture of appreciation and recognition in a school that has a very high staff attrition rate, a very high teacher attrition rate, and even to a certain extent, students that come from different areas of the neighborhood, different middle schools and come in. And how are we creating this environment of appreciation and recognition that is constant and consistent. Um, and how are we creating it in a way that is budget friendly because we are an urban low income school that does not have a budget for student council activities. And how are we doing it in a way that can involve everybody regardless of cost, regardless of anything like that. Um, and that's around all my planning. Every time we plan dances, every time we plan activities, it's always like we're gonna do this as cost effective as possible because we don't wanna bring the dollar hit onto our students. Um, so the ideas I'm going to show you are mostly around that. They're not going to be ones that we have to spend a lot of money for or ones that depend on a lot of parent engagement because that's just not something my school has. If you're blessed to have those things, then go nuts like, <laughs> and teach me your secrets. Um, so that's just some context. Some other background is I always have this joke that I can confidently get up in front of an auditorium of 950 teenagers wearing a blue tutu and never once ever feel nervous about announcing things. But for some reason, when it comes to like running little small classes like this, I do tend to get a little nervous and then I'll start talking faster. So if I'm going too fast or if I'm skipping over things, just feel free to unmute yourself and tell me to slow down. I think it's a short person thing. We talk real fast when we're nervous. Okay. Um, so when I was thinking around why staff appreciation, why recognition, why does this need to be its own seminar title when a lot of times it could be a blog post or an Instagram post, it could be something real short and sweet. Why is this something we need to be talking about more in depth? And I really think that recognizing staff and students and questioning how we do that and pushing ourselves beyond that is how we build our culture in our schools and how student leadership can really, really take the brunt of making a positive culture that's not just on events. You know, how do we have warm, fuzzy feelings where everybody feels cared for that's outside of homecoming? How do we have warm, fuzzy feelings where everybody feels like they are recognized for who they are outside of that one week that we have like mental health awareness or that one week where we are making it really, really explicit? How do we show staff, how do we show students that we care? because nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. 
And if we can show that this is a building in a place of caring, then it's gonna be easier for students to learn and it's gonna be easier for teachers to teach. And ultimately that's what our leadership program should be doing is making that core thing easier for everybody. So that's why I kind of picked this topic because when I came in to my building, appreciation was like this much and it was just one little box that we checked and then we moved on and we didn't keep it going. So I wanted to think about how we can build that more and it's been a challenge. So I'm just gonna kind of share our journey in building staff appreciation to be part of the culture. Um, and I teach a lot using stories, so this is gonna sound like a story. If, uh, sorry, that's just how I teach. <laughs> um, so first let's talk about the basics of staff and student appreciation. And this is the stuff, I call it the basics because this is the stuff that if you Google staff appreciation in schools or student recognition in schools, these are the things that are gonna come up. These are the groups that get recognized the most. These are the ideas that pretty much everybody did over COVID or even just in general. Um, so these are kind of like our basics. You know, when we talk about appreciation weeks, there's always teacher appreciation week. Um, if you're a really, really involved school, you might have school nurse appreciation day, counselor appreciation day. And then if your school likes your principal, which I hope they do, then you'll have a principal appreciation day, right? An admin appreciation day. Um, and almost every school does those things. And it's just the one week or the one day of the year that you guys do. And it's usually really awesome. They get lemonade, they get cookies, they get thank you cards. It's a real warm and fuzzy fun time. And then when we talk about the students, we talk about what students get recognized a lot. The freshmen get their big welcome week and we teach them during their welcome week that they are the most important people to the school, right? The seniors, they get everything. They get graduation, they get proms, they get awards nights. And then they get the honor students and the outstanding students. And so in most schools, that's what staff and student appreciation looks like, is these people and these things. Um, and I know that once COVID hit, it became a challenge but we saw some really awesome stuff with people getting creative and putting yard signs in the school in the houses of every student uh, we saw the car praise we saw the video montages the online virtual senior awards and the online virtual teacher appreciation and we saw the social media shout outs uh, and these were all awesome and wonderful things but i am always what's missing what could we have done more of what could we have gone beyond and what could we have added either before COVID or during COVID. Um, because I know, I don't know about you guys, but we're going back remote at first and then virtual. So, or and then in person. So we're starting remote and then going in person. So I don't know how it looks for you guys. Um, so when I look at the basics, I'm like, okay, that's just one thing. And we could do a whole seminar on how to do yard signs, how to do video montages, how to do car parades. But those are things that a lot of people do and those are those wonderful moments and memories we create, but there's already a template set up for that. So how is your leadership program pushing beyond that? So I always, I ask myself, how is my leadership program, my student council working beyond just that one day, that one week, that one thank you note to promote the constant appreciation message of, I see you and I care about you as an individual. We know you and we accept you. And how are we doing that in a meaningful way that's constant um, beyond just the one day, the one week, the one parade? So I have been really, really playing with this idea of how staff appreciation looks like building connection and actually getting to know staff as people. Um, I laugh every time when students were like, oh, I sat in the class with Mr. So-and-so for a whole year and I didn't even know that you like Pearl Jam or, you know, things like that. So I like to do staff appreciation around, let's kind of playfully get to know staff and playfully poke fun at staff if possible. So we, did, we do stuff like um, during teacher appreciation, we have every teacher submit their high school staff, their high school photo. And then we turn into a guessing game for all of our freshmen where they have to guess the staff member's high school photo. And that gets really, really fun because we have people from like the 80s who have like the real, real, real throwback, like graduated class 82 with the, with the collar and the fridge and all that kind of stuff. And then they look at the teacher now and they're like, really? That's Miss Stromberg? And it creates that sense of like appreciation and connection for your teachers. So it's a reminder of 
they were high school students. What do? Um, we do stuff like staff bingo, and we have a teacher version and a student version where we issue a challenge for a random month. And it can be a slow month, it could be teacher appreciation week, it could be whatever you want. But we'll do where we have um, 10 challenges where students have to find different teachers that aren't on their schedule that listen to country music, that have a weird pet, that do different things like that. Because then they're going out, they're meeting teachers, teachers feel valued as people and then kids are finding out some cool stuff about their building. And then we also do the flip for the teachers. We challenge the teachers to find students who maybe have unique situations, unique talents. Um, we'll tell students, go talk to an athlete who isn't on your roster. So look at the football roster and, oh, you have all the JV team, we'll go talk to this other kid that's not in your class. So we do um, find the staff, find the student bingo. And that is appreciation because you're recognizing them for individuals. You're not just giving them a thank you card on one random day out of the year. Um, we talk a lot about social media challenges. There was this big surge of these like emotional montage videos with like cheesy music. I'm listening to it right now. Yeah, Rashawn. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so we, we have a lot, there was like this big resurgence of these video montages with the really, really cheesy music that's like, I appreciate so-and-so because, or I appreciate so-and-so because, and those were great and wonderful and marvelous. But what I noticed was it was just that one moment. A lot of times it was the same teachers, which how bad must that suck if you're the one teacher who didn't get a shout out in the montage video. Um, and then that was it. There was no interaction. There was no like show of recognition or appreciation beyond just that. So then we switched to challenge videos where the kids not only said thank you, but they challenged their teachers. Um, and we did a big staff TikTok challenge that it turned into our staff appreciation. And it was a lot of fun and the kids really enjoyed it. Um, and then my personal favorite, this is something we do for staff appreciation all the time, is we do a staff fun fact kahoot. And again, when I talk about recognition, I'm thinking about how are we going beyond just a thank you note? How are we going beyond just a bag of cookies? How are we learning to build a staff culture of, I see who you are as a person, and I love you and appreciate you for that. So we did this really cool thing where we sent out this survey to our staff members, and it just had a bunch of random questions. And we told staff members, answer as many or as few as you want, but we're gonna turn it into a game. So it was like, what's a strange hobby you had in college? What's your most unique talent? Um, what's an allergy you have? Which was an interesting one. Um, a unique job you've had. What's your strangest reason you've ever had to go to the hospital? Uh, and we compiled all this information. And then once we got all the students together for one of our um, school-wide assemblies, we had a huge kahoot where the kids had to guess which teacher matched which fact. So we have a teacher who has been in our building for 12 years who follows fish around. Like, I don't know, that's like his thing, he follows fish. He's been to like 30 something fish concerts. And the kids never knew that. And he's one of the favorites, right? So we put that into our staff kahoot and it turned into like a whole, what, Mr. Crossel follows fish? What, Miss Stromberg had to go to the hospital once because her elbow popped out of her arm or weird things like that. And we immediately began building a bigger culture of not just appreciation, but recognition for who staff members are as people. Um, and the teachers loved it. They were like, this was the best teacher appreciation week because the kids really got to know us and we got to know the kids. And it was just fun because it helped us build relationships. And the one thing we heard a lot was, I wish we would have did it sooner and not in May towards the end of the year. Um, so just thinking about, there you go, sorry. How are we building staff appreciation beyond just the thank you card in a way that we're encouraging people to get to know each other? Um, so that's one big push. That's one big thing that I might challenge you guys to be thinking about. Now, my other challenge with staff appreciation, and here is where I went to my student council and I really pushed them and challenged them and made them mad at me for like two whole weeks, um, which if your student council isn't mad at you, at least once a year, you're doing something wrong. So <laughs> that's just a fact. <laughs> uh, so I told them, okay, great. You guys did teacher appreciation. Who did you forget? And they were like, wait, what? And I said, who did you forget? You did homecoming, recognized your king and queen. You recognized your athletes. 
you did your teacher staff royalty. Who did you forget? And uh, they were mad at me because they were like, you're saying we don't do enough? I said, no, but we need to think about who we're missing. Because when we talk about staff, we always talk about teachers, sometimes talk about counselors, but we are forgetting the other people who make our building run. I don't know how many of you guys, and this might be my challenge to you, how many of you guys have your whole entire school at some point recognize and thank the cafeteria employees? How many of you guys have your entire school, not just your council or not just you, recognize your security teams or your custodians or your librarians or your paras? And how, how often are you looking at other students that aren't the athletes, that aren't the artists, that aren't the honors kids, that don't get the attendance awards? And so when I got asked to talk about recognition, I was like, let's look beyond the typical recognition and who is mostly getting recognized. Let's look at these groups and what we can do for them because we want to build a building culture of everybody's being seen and everybody's being appreciated. Um, and as soon as I said this, my kids, they were like, I don't think we've ever said it, did anything for the cafeteria ladies. And I was like, ironic, right? The ladies that feed you every day, nothing. Interesting, right? <laughs> and then even paras, they were like, well, technically what is a para? And we talked about what their job is and they're like, oh yeah, they're really important. Yes, they are. So how are we incorporating school-wide recognition for these groups? And I would challenge you to think about that about your schools. And if you do something awesome, please share, because we are still constantly searching for ideas. So here's the first thing that you do when you want to build recognition for everybody. I love, 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 love lists. Like, I just can't get enough of them. And this is where people think I'm a crazy person, okay? I always start the year with the list of every kid and every teacher and every staff member. And it's just like one giant Excel document and I'll start sorting it. I'll put ninth grade here, 10th grade here, 11th grade here. I'll put paras here, custodial staff here. And every time, every year I go ask the school secretary for this list and she looks at me like I'm a crazy person. But I make it my personal mission that at some point everybody on that list gets highlighted because they were recognized in some way, shape or form. So I'll show you an example of what some of my lists look like. So this was my uh, list of seniors that I changed for COVID when we were doing our virtual graduation. And I instantly put in there a column for awards and organizations and recognitions that they've gotten. And of course I've taken the names off so there's just student IDs just to anonymize it. But then what I did was I had my student council go through this and I was like, look at these kids that have nothing. Look at these kids where their spot is completely blank that means they went through their entire senior year without any kind of recognition, without any kind of props or kudos or anything. And we can't let them make it to graduation with being appreciated and recognized in some way. And so when we were doing things like our student shout outs, those were the kids we went to first. We first went to this kid with absolutely nothing. And we emailed all of his teachers and we said, can you please tell us something awesome about this kid? Cause we want to shout them out because they probably have not gotten anything before because they're not in the club or they don't do this or they don't have any kind of award. Um, and so it's very easy to get overwhelmed with this kind of information, but I love, 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 love lists for that reason, because sometimes you start to see gaps that you don't recognize. And if you get a ninth grade list, you'll immediately see kids that always get mentioned as like ninth grade shout outs, ninth grade attendance awards, ninth grade honor roll. And then you can start looking at oh, none of these ninth graders got any kind of recognition. You can start looking at advisory groups. You can start looking at classes that didn't get any kind of recognition. And then same thing for teachers. When we do teacher appreciation, I get a whole entire list of teachers and I have my Stuco kids go through and make sure that they are going to claim a teacher and make sure that teacher gets the same recognition that other people did. And this is hard because you guys know as well as I do, that in some of these buildings, there's teachers that are not the favorite teacher. There's teachers that are that kind of grumpy, crotchety teacher, or the teacher that mm, kids don't really like going to their class. And I said, that's fine, but we need to make sure that we are still showing that their presence in this building is valued. Same thing with staff members. We have uh, custodians that we love, and then we have custodians that are kind of grumpy guesses, but they are still custodians who work in our building that we still need to recognize. So I love, love, love lists for that reason. 
if you want to build staff appreciation, make your culture something where everybody's getting recognized, ask your secretary for a list and start looking for your gaps because you'll see that very quickly. And so then we think about what, how are we recognizing these people? These are my favorite alternative staff appreciation methods. And I say alternative because they go beyond just writing a thank you note, giving it to a teacher or giving them breakfast or cookies one day. Uh, so we did this last year break room makeovers where we went to the teacher break room, the custodian break room. That was really fun because it was in the basement and the kids didn't even know the custodians had a break room. And we went to the secretary break room and they took stock of what they looked like and what kind of environment that our employees were in. And they said, no, 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 this will not do it. They fundraised, they went shopping at the thrift stores. They went and bought paint or borrowed paint, big borrowed and steel. Um, and they spent a whole day making over the break rooms and they made a big sign that said, we love you custodians. We love you cafeteria ladies. We love you secretaries. And they put it up in the break room and it doesn't even have to go as far as painting. It can be like you hang up some posters and write some notes and stock them up on snacks. Things like that. Um, chalk messages. I, when we went to Manitou Springs, the kids were really excited to see chalk messages everywhere because I don't know what it is about my kids, but they're obsessed with chalk. And so they're like, see, look, we're not the only ones. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> chalk and glitter, chalk and glitter. I don't know what it is. Um, so we think about chalk messages, pick a day where you're like, let's say hi to the custodian workers and go where they usually enter. You know, so our cafeteria ladies have a back door they usually go into, our custodians have a back door they usually go into. Write some chalk messages there. Hey, we're happy you're here, welcome to work. And then don't forget, it needs to be visible. So if you do it for them, go back to the front of the building and say, we're so thankful for our custodians and list their names because then it's not just student council doing it, it's the entire school reading it and doing it, right? Um, so that same marketing you would use for events, use it to show appreciation. We always have at least one week out of the year where we hang a giant poster in the main hall that simply says, we love our lunch ladies, and that's it. And then we'll put markers in the front and people can sign them and people can say thank you. And it's really funny and cute because you'll get the kid that's like, she always sneaks me an extra burrito and like writes it up there. And they love it. Let all the cafeteria ladies will come up. They'll take pictures in front of the posters. It's a great moment for them. Um, and then the other thing that we've done before, which is my favorite, is we'll interview them for our morning announcements. So Bob, the custodian, who almost never gets seen because he works night shift, will wait for us. He'll come into work 20 minutes early. I'll have a Stuco kid go down into the cafeteria area with him. We'll do a quick little interview. Hi guys, we're here with Bob. Bob's one of our custodians. Bob, what do you want us to know about you this week, this week, this year, this month, whatever. And then we play that as part of a morning announcement. Instantly, the kids are like, there's more people keeping this building running and more people being appreciated and recognized. We're building that culture of everybody has something. And then we talk about other students. So this is where I really, really, this is where I struggle. And so I would like to see what your guys' ideas are with recognizing the entire student body, uh, not just the seniors, even though they're important because it's their last year, not just the outstanding kids, the high achievers. How are we recognizing every single kid? Um, I am a big, big, big fan of using morning announcements for this, letting students and staff give each other virtual high fives, having a nomination form that everyone can use, send it out, and then having student council go through that nomination form and look for names that they've never seen before or look for names that nobody's used. Again, going back to that list, right? We've never seen this kid get posted before, so we're gonna call him out. We're gonna shout him out. We're gonna give him some recognition. And it can be really simple stuff. Like I, I've literally read announcements that have said, Mrs. Jeremini would like to give Abel a high five because his robot didn't go on fire in class this week. You know, like little things like that. Kids that don't often get recognized. Um, we also have one day out of the year, and this is a fun one, but it's a hard one. Again, lists, 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 where we put the name of every single student on the wall in the main hall. And we do it usually in the middle of the week. We'll pick a Wednesday after school, and we'll have either hearts, one year was hearts, one year was little Mickey heads. It just depends on what theme you want to pick that year. Sometimes it's just a sticky note and we write every single kid's name on one note and we tape it to the wall. 
And with a school of 950, it takes up the entire main hall. But it was really, really cool when we started doing this because kids who would walk in every day and never even feel like they were seen, all of a sudden walked into a huge banner that said, we appreciate you and their name front and center in the main hall with every other student. So it was a really, really awesome moment. And then it became cool because kids would search for their name and they would get their friends names. And it was just a fun little thing. Um, so thinking about how you can, I just literally put the kids' names on a wall and I say, we appreciate you. Recruiting teachers. We have an anime club that never, ever, ever gets seen because they're shy and they're artistic. So we, went, we go to that teacher and we say, can we have an anime club day? And we hang the kids' art in the main hall. We have ELD students who, because they don't speak English, are often shy to speak up and get recognized. So we have a day where all of our announcements are in Spanish and they're read by our ELD students. And these are things that teachers help me with. Um, so getting really, really creative with that, you know, having a school Padlet that's constantly running with shout outs. Um, DPS does this and I kind of stole it, DPS did and made it just a Lincoln thing. Just running through Padlet constantly. If you've never used Padlet, hop on, cause it's dope. And then also getting creative with community. We have local businesses around here that have signs that always say really random things. I like shouting out random students. We have a discount tire across the street that I'm like, hey, if you guys aren't running any kind of promotion, can you say go robotics club or go anime club or go something? Uh, and more often than not, they're willing to do it. And then of course, goodies. Here's some of my other favorites. Uh, my favorite, favorite thing we've ever done is we pranked the teachers or staff members by leaving a gnome in their front yard that we painted with the Lincoln Lancer logo on his shirt. So we got a little gnome from Target. It was like $5 and the kids painted it to be wearing a Lincoln shirt. And then they would, they would ask students like who's going to get gnome and they would pick a random teacher and just like plop it in their front yard with a little note that says have a free coffee on us. And then teachers would walk out their door the next morning and they'd have a little gnome in their front yard. Um, different things like that. You can have random days where Stuco is giving out stickers saying we're glad you're here. If you are still virtual starting first semester, make use of the post office, make it a weekly mission to send a postcard or a note from student council to a group of kids, to a teacher. Um, if you're in person, mental health days are amazing. Um, we had a day where we took over the conference room and student council came and they brought oil diffusers and meditation music and they had our uh, mental health team do like little meditation workshops. And then we even had a local business come in and do 15 minute chair massages for staff and teachers. And so teachers just came in throughout the day and they had their little moment of peace and love and uh, involved everybody and involved the community. It was really, really fun. So thinking about those ways of recognition. Again, I'm just trying to push beyond the thank you note. <laughs> uh, some little extras for you. Calendar everything out. I always start at the beginning of the year with my activities calendar, which I'm sure every, everybody does, where you put in your homecoming, you put in your pep rallies, you put in your dances. Look for gaps where there's like slow weeks. I know it's hard to say slow weeks in student council, but if you have a slow week where there's nothing going on and just plug in a random appreciation there. Um, these are the official nationwide dates, but I immediately look at that and I see the problem is, is almost everybody has a date in April. And I'm like, why are we waiting until April to tell our librarians how much we love them? Why can't we do that in October or September? Why are we waiting until May for school lunch hero week. Why can't we do that the first time we come back, right? So looking at, um, those are the nationwide dates, but I really, really encourage you to try and have something going constantly every month. Just little things here and there, posters, chalk messages, everything. And my final little note, nothing is too out there when you're showing your staff and students your appreciation. Never hesitate to think outside the box. Uh, one of my favorite things that I did was we hired a plane to fly a banner across the city of Denver that said, congratulations, Lincoln Lancer graduates. Uh, and people thought I was crazy when I was like, hey, let's hire a plane. But you're a student council mentor because you're a little extra and a little crazy. So don't be afraid to ask for some extra stuff. <laughs> um, so never hesitate to think outside the box and you want to show your appreciation. 
make it visible, make it constant, and make it so everybody gets something in some way. <laughs> uh, any questions, any, any ideas you guys want to share, anything that I may have missed or anything you want me to elaborate on, I'm happy to do so. I also have a really good wait time, so. <laughs> Sorry, are you, let's keep, Cass, are you just finishing up? Yep. Did, were there, I, I saw uh, oh, I one, uh, there was a question, I don't know, and maybe you uh, answered already, Cass, but I know Alice had a question. Can you share your staff questionnaire with us? Yeah, they're really good questions. So it's, yeah, I'll send that to everybody. I'll send it to Sailor and then I can have you send it out. Perfect, yep. Yeah. And um, I see another from Jessica. Can we share the PowerPoints? Yeah, I, Cass, if you send it to me, I can afford it. And just so you guys know, all these, once we're done with the webinar series this summer, um, everything's going to go up online. So Cass is, uh, we, we're recording right now. Um, Cass's uh, presentation will be on YouTube and we'll send everybody the links for um, all, the, all the webinars and the uh, summer conference as well. So everything will be online. So we can share that presentation or you can just go and watch um, on YouTube at the end of the summer here and, and you can kind of see it. Let's um, do both. So, <laughs> yep. Uh, it looks like that's pretty much all the questions. So um, next week, what I've been doing each week is, is letting our presenter um, for the following week, next week, kind of talk a little bit about what they're going to be speaking of. And we've got Alice, um, in the zoom here so alice will be going next week with her presentation i know that uh it's still last i heard tbd whether it's gonna be monday or tuesday so um, alice if you want to talk a little bit about what you will be presenting on next week and if you have any updates on a date and a time as well hello so we are gonna have to switch from monday to tuesday um we're hiring a new principal and i'm on that hiring committee and so they set the date monday is our all day my report time is 6 30 in the morning <laughs> <laughs> is it via zoom is it on is it via zoom at least no it's in person oh you gotta go in for all oh. i gotta get up and <laughs> get on campus by 6 30 so uh, shock shock the schedule a little bit but anyway so we'll go tuesday um and just 10 a.m is fine um that seems to be a solid time for all of them so tuesday yep. at 10 okay and i've been thinking through i don't have a catchy title yet but um, my thought process is most people at this point are walking into student council and usually right off the gate, you're planning back to school events, you're planning homecoming, and obviously we're not really planning for that. And so it's going to be kind of surrounding, what do you do? Um, what do you have? Um, I mean, what are you going to do with kids when you don't have events to plan? So I'll talk about goal setting talk about how to run a book study um, with kids. So if you've never done a book study before, I'll share all the materials that I have for that. And um, just some other ideas to have for social distance team building kind of stuff. Um, so all the things that we like to do with student council, but we never have time to do because we're planning stuff. Um, so that's, that's what I got. You're muted, Justin. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that's all we've got this morning. Um, Cass, thank you so much. Great presentation. Um, if anybody has any follow-up questions, please feel free uh, to reach out uh, directly um, to Cass or myself, and I can forward it on um, to Cass, and, and we look forward to having everybody back next week um, for Alice's presentation as well. So thanks for uh, spending your time with us uh, this morning and we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thank you guys. Thanks guys. Thank you. Let's take a quick picture of this. Perfect. I'll send you that PowerPoint, okay Justin? Oh yeah, perfect. Thanks guys. Justin, do you still need me to hang or are you good? Tuesday at 10. T Tuesday at 10. All good. Yep. We got it down. Perfect. All I'll right. Come, I'll come up with a catchy title that Whitney can put in the email. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that works. What are we yep. doing? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Bye.